you know, one of the exercises that I try to tell people to always think through is actually an exercise that we learned when we were going through our first few weeks at the farm. The farm is CIA's training camp, also known as Field Tradecraft Course or FTC. Uh, and one of the things that we were kind of, the exercise that we were put through was asking ourselves, what are you uniquely good at? Mm. And this idea of being, you know, not just good, but being uniquely good. Right. Uniquely good was defined as what you, the thing that you do comes natural to you. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, it also increases your energy. So if you start doing it at 10 a.m., and you stop doing it at 5 p.m., you have more energy at 5 p.m. than you did at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. What is that thing? If you can find that thing, if you can do that thing, then you will never run out of energy. You can do it all day, every day, all the time. <laughs> and it's yep. a self-licking ice cream cone. You keep getting more energy out of it, which allows you to do more of it, which helps you build your 10,000 hours of experience, which helps you become a master of your craft, what is that thing that you do? And then once you kind of go through the work of figuring out what that thing is, then you have to ruthlessly shape your life around doing that thing. So at CIA, they wanted us to figure that out because there's so many different kinds of operations. There's right. human intelligence operations, cyber operations, sabotage operations, paramilitary operations, joint operations, uh, liaison operations with foreign partners. Like there's so many kinds of operations that they wanted us to really understand what is the thing that you can do all day, every day, and always have this wellspring of energy. Mm -hmm. Because if you can identify that, we can train you to do the right kind of operation so that we can send you somewhere into a dark room and you can work for seven straight days and we don't have to worry about you. So isn't that the thing that we should be teaching our children? That's the that, argument. That's the argument right? that I would make now. That right. The, if you're part of the 20% mm -hmm. and you teach this to your children, guess mm -hmm. what you have to accept? The 80-20 yeah. rule. Mm -hmm. So if you have three kids, two of your kids are not going to be as talented, dedicated, or successful as the third kid. Right? That's just empirical, empirical fact. It doesn't feel good. I'm sorry for all the people who are yelling at me and swearing at the screen, but that's just the way it is. Look, I have two kids. Yeah. I have two kids. I love my two kids. Empirically speaking, the chances of them <laughs> both being successful are almost nothing. Empirically speaking, there's only like a 20% chance that one of them is going to be successful, mm -hmm. which is why I have to be as successful as I can be to create the legacy of wealth so that they can live off of that legacy if they need to. And I'm hopefully they to. will beget children and then those children will be 20% of those children will be successful. Right. I, I just think it's so important that we, we teach that and it feels like it's just strategic critical thinking. It feels like if you embed it early enough, it's not so much that it's a lesson to be taught, but just kind of part of their biological being. And I notice that I have one child. See, I, I go one and go, let's just all in on one and just... <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go one and done. We're going to go all in and we're going to try not to make it a weird kid, but we're going to make it a self-sufficient kid and we're going to make it a kid that gets it. And so we're going to make so it an it. <laughs> yes, pretty much. Exactly.